would like to welcome you back to Discover Bible Prophecy. Today, this is video number 302, and it's called The Little Horn Power. So I hope you get a blessing from it. And don't forget, if you do like the videos and you want to encourage me to do more, uh, please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube, or hit the like button if you're on other uh, vehicles. And you can also send your comments to me at comments at thecomingcrisis.org. And I'll answer all emails that I can. So this is the second video in my new series called the 300 series of Bible prophecy studies. You know, the books of Daniel and Revelation contain 17 prophetic storylines that together form an amazing matrix of upcoming end time events. So this video series is going to attempt to give you an overview of these 17 videos. Now we're not going to go into great detail into each one of them, uh, but I will be putting references in the comment area below the video so that those that are interested in looking further into these uh, prophecies you have uh, some links there that you can follow in a study on your own. So, so today's study will focus on a common event that's found in both uh, the second and third prophecy. And I'm calling it again, the little horn power. So let's get started with our study today. Well, this is what I call a time frame template. And I'm going to be using this uh, template to lay out the various prophecies as we, as we go along. And let me show you what they're about here. This first block consists of the years leading up to Christ's ministry. The second block here uh, has to do with the Dark Ages. The third area, which is not a block, it's just a gap. The Bible talks about a delay that Christ uh, puts into the last day tribulation uh, events. And we are currently in this uh, delay area here right now. All right, well, the next two blocks consist of the seven last plagues and also the seven first plagues. Some people only remember or study the seven last plagues, but they're, because they're last, there is a seven uh, first plagues also. And these combination of the seven first and the seven last plagues uh, cover a time period of 1,335 days. And then after the, the plagues comes the thousand-year millennium in heaven. And uh, we'll be covering that as we go along. Now, this is kind of the, uh, the final layout that you'll see as we go along as we start adding in the various prophecies. In my first video, we covered prophecies 1, 2, and 3. And today we're going to cover another item on Prophecy 2 right here. But as you can see, the prophecies go all the way across here in some cases. And uh, we will be covering the various events in the prophecies as we move along uh, this template here from left to right. So as we move along further and further into time here, we will be picking up all the events in these various prophecies. Now, the first five uh, prophecies come out of the book of Daniel, and the last 12 prophecies come out of the book of Revelation. And here you can see a listing of all the various prophecies, five in Daniel and 12 in the book of Revelation. So you could pause the video now if you wanted to, and you could uh, copy down the various Bible references and, and uh, go and study along with me as we go. So as I mentioned, today's study will be in prophecy number two, it's the event called the Little Horn Power, I'm calling this the video today. Then it's in Daniel 7, verses 1 to uh, 12, and uh, some additional te uh, texts further on in Daniel 7. All right, let's get going. First, I want to review just real quickly what we already studied in uh, video number 301. Let's re recap on what we've learned there. Well, the first 
prophecy, prophecy uh, one, has to do with a metal man in Daniel 2. And that metal man consisted of uh, multiple different metals that represent, represents kingdoms. So we had the gold that represented, the, the, the head of gold that, re that represented Babylon, the chest of silver representing Medo-Persia, the uh, belly and thighs of brass re representing Greece, the legs of iron that represented the Roman Empire, and the uh, feet and toes of iron and clay, and those represent the uh, kings, the ten last kings uh, in, in the end of time. So this is the uh, very simple and very easy to understand prophecy in Daniel 2. And we can see them down here where the head is Babylon, the chest is Medo-Persia, thighs are Greece, uh, or Greece, and the legs are Rome. And those correspond to these dates here in uh, history, okay? Now we bring the second prophecy in that we studied last time, and that has to do with four animals that come up out of the, uh, the sea. And these animals were the lion, a bear, a leopard, and a monster beast. And the, and the lion, we learned, represents Babylon. The bear represents Medo-Persia. And the leopard represents Greece. And then we had this uh, nondescript beast that's just, just called a monster beast, and it represents Rome. And we saw that these four animals corresponded to the head, chest, thigh, and legs of the first prophecy. So God is reinforcing in our mind the first four kingdoms, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Very, very interesting, isn't it? Well, then we went on to the third prophecy. And this prophecy had to do with a goat and a ram. And the goat, we learned, represented Greece, and the ram represented Medo-Persia. And we found out that these also linked into the bear and the chest, and the goat linked into the leopard and the thighs. And they represented these two kingdoms, Medo-Persia and Greece. So God is using three uh, fairly straightforward prophecies to teach us something. What he's teaching us is this. He's teaching us that there's linkage between these prophecies. So as a recap of what we learned in our first study, number one, the timing of events within a prophecy are progressive. When the order of event is broken, another new and different prophecy must be started. So we can see down here in the first prophecy, when the head is complete, that the event associated with the head, then the next prophecy, which is the chest, then the thighs, and then the legs progress. So you need to finish one event before you, and before you go on to the next event. All right, the second thing we learned is that God uses multiple symbols in various prophecies to teach us that prophecies have linkage events to other prophecies. So we clearly saw that in these four uh, metals in the first prophecy linked up to four animals and then the second and the third one linked up to the ram and the goat. So this was pretty interesting, I thought. So God is taking us along step by step, showing us how to interpret the prophecies that he's put in Daniel and Revelation. This idea of linkages is very, very important. And we'll find out that this will allow us to determine the uh, time frame that the other prophecies should synchronize with uh, the prior and future prophecies. And lastly, we learned that sometimes God will use a statue or various metals like gold or silver or animals or beasts to represent a kingdom, but he doesn't use this all the time. Not every metal that we find in the, in the Bible represents a kingdom and not every animal represents a kingdom either. Don't forget that Jesus is represented as what? as a, an animal, as a lamb, the lamb of God. So he, he is not representing a kingdom when that is presented. So these are three pretty straightforward things that I want us to keep in mind as we go forward here. All right, now today we're gonna look a little bit more in detail on this monster beast 
with 10 horns. We're going to take a closer look at that. All right, we're going to start with uh, some text here. Daniel 7, 7. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. So this is what Daniel saw in his night vision. It had large iron teeth, it crushed and devoured its victims, and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from the former beasts, and it had ten horns. All right, so this beast, one of the interesting things, it had iron teeth, and we're going to find out that this beast here represents the Roman Empire, and uh, Rome was noted for their, uh, their battle instruments, their swords, and their armor and stuff that was made out of uh, uh, iron. So here's the beast that we're representing. This as the beast in Daniel 7, 10 horns up on its head. And like I said, this represents the Roman Empire. Now, if we look at the Roman Empire, we notice that uh, in its heyday, it encompassed the entire Mediterranean area. It was a very large, large uh, area that it ruled. It had iron teeth and it crushed and devoured and trampled its victims. It was very powerful and it, it uh, treated its, uh, when, it, when it conquered a nation, it treated them very cruelly. Matter of fact, the Roman Empire w was involved in many bloody and horrific battles and sieges and campaigns and its emperors and generals committed cruel and sadistic acts. Now, I'm not going to go into all the cruel and sadistic acts that they've done, but you can read this in history. I'll mention a, kind of a couple here. It says here that Nero, hor horrific torture and crucifixion of the Christians. The Roman emperor, uh, Commodus, fighting uh, gladiators, and he uh, gave them wooden swords to fight each other, and, but they had been blinded and their arms were broken and they were half starved. So this was a very cruel and sadistic uh, uh, sport, if you will, that they uh, took, undertook. Spartacus slaves, he had slave gladiators, and he crucified 6,600 of them on wooden trees on the Appalachian Way. And I've read that they've actually, they actually ran out of trees to cut down for this uh, uh, cruel torture. Well, these, this ten horn Let's find out more about this ten horns. First off, I want to give you a prophecy key. The horns are a symbol of something. They're a symbol of kingdoms or governments. This is universally uh, used in Bible prophecy to indicate a, go a government or a kingdom. So these are ten governments or ten kingdoms. That's what that represents. So Daniel 7, verse 8, while I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up amongst them, or among them. So this little horn came up among the ten horns. And, the, and three of the first of the ten horn, horns, that is the ten countries, were uprooted before it. So this little horn uprooted ten kingdoms. And this little horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. So this uh, little horn, it says, was different than the other horns. It was a government, but this government had eyes and it had a human, eyes like a human, and it had a mouth that spoke boastfully. So let's find out more about this little horn. The ten horns are ten kings who will come out of this kingdom. That's in Daniel 7, 28. So this kingdom here, this is the Roman Empire that I just showed you. Out of that Roman Empire eventually came ten countries. And these are a list of the ten countries. I'll cover a little more of this in a moment here. So the ten kings are ten countries. And after them, that is, after the ten kings 
another king will arise different from the earlier ones. And the other king is this little horn power that had eyes like a man and spoke boastfully. And he will subdue and uproot three kings or three kingdoms. So this little horn uproots three kingdoms, three of the ten kingdoms here. So the Roman Empire was broken up into 10 different countries, and that occurred around 476 AD. And these are the 10 countries that you can see here. This is a pretty, pretty well uh, studied or documented in your history books, and you can look into that more interesting if you're in deeper, if you're more interested in it. Let's continue with Daniel, Daniel 7:19. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on the head and about the other horn that came up. So Daniel was inquisitive. He was wanting to know more about these ten horns. And he wanted to know before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others had eyes and a mouth and spoke boastfully. So God is identifying this little horn, power, that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully He's calling it more imposing. So this is a powerful uh, kingdom that comes up amongst the other kingdoms. Very interesting. Well, I believe the, uh, the attributes of this little horn power constitutes the Pope or the papal uh, system. So the papal state is, it's called the Vatican. It's a tiny country. It's probably the tiniest country in the world, I think. And it's on the Italian peninsula, and it's under the sovereign direct rule of the Pope. So the Pope is both the head of the spiritual Catholic Church, and he's also head of the Vatican, this little country. So popes have regularly claimed to be divine. And as the supposed successor of St. Peter, the Pope boastfully claims infallibility and the position, and he also claims the position of God on earth. And he has the ability to judge and to excommunicate. So if you're a Catholic and you get excommunicated, <clears throat> that means that you're not going to go to heaven and you'll be uh, condemned to hell. So he has tremendous power within the Catholic Church. So the little horn power we find has eliminated three kingdoms. And these are the three kingdoms that it has eliminated. The Hurrielites, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. These are the three horns. So he destroyed those, or he had them destroyed, and they're now extinct. You cannot find any reference to them uh, in any of the, the uh, countries now. So three of the ten kingdoms were destroyed at the instigation of the little horn power, the papacy. Now, you may be asking right now, why was the papacy, why was the, the Pope so upset with these three kingdoms? Well, the reason was that they did not accept the papal mandate regarding Christ's divinity. Now, you can study that if you want. That's fairly well documented also. So, in order to uh, eliminate that problem for him, he had them uprooted and destroyed. So, these three countries were uprooted and destroyed by the papal uh, authority. So the total elimination of these three kingdoms occurred by uh, three, uh, 538. And um, it, what it did, it strengthened the hand of the papacy. Having the power to uproot these three made the papacy much more of a formidable uh, power to deal with. So historians have unanimously agreed that the papal Rome emerged out of the ruins of the Roman Empire. And I believe that only the, pap the papacy fits the little horn power description found in Daniel 7. Now, we're not talking about the Catholic people here. There are many good, faithful Christian Catholics, but we're talking about the system, the Catholic Church and the papacy. This is what we're talking about when we say it fits the papal authority. I mean, the papal authority fits this little horn power. 
So the, the papacy destroyed these three kingdoms in uh, 493, 534, and 538. And you can look that up again in, in your history books. But what did this do? This paved the way for the establishment of papal Rome as an independent power by 538 AD. Now this will become an important date for us in our uh, upcoming prophecy study, so I want you to remember that. 538 was an important date here for you to remember. Well, what have we learned from our study today? Have we learned anything? Let's take a look here. Number one. I've shown you that the ten horns represent ten kingdoms that replace the Roman Empire. Number two, the little horn power represents the papal system. Number three, the papal system uprooted three of the ten kingdoms and completely eliminated them. And finally, number four, the, papal, the Bible speaks of the papal system as being more imposing than the ten nations, and it was. Uh, the papal system was a very powerful uh, ruling entity in, throughout Europe during the Dark Ages, and we'll study that in future uh, prophecy studies. Well, I pray that you've had a blessing from our study today. I'm trying to keep them short, around 20 to minutes to 30 minutes. So I hope you received a blessing from our study today, and I hope you come back well, and view our next study, number 303. And I want you to remember that Jesus is promising in the book of Revelation. He says, look, I am coming soon. Have faith in God. Keep, keep your faith in God. And if you've had a blessing from today's study, I want to encourage you to uh, hit the subscribe button on YouTube or give me an up thumb on uh, other uh, medias. Uh, we thank you for taking time to look at this video. And we pray that you've got a blessing from it. Thank you.